So we now, I've just been told by my mum that she's got lung cancer and um, then basically I'm now trying to say I'd like to take you to the hospital, where can I, can I, and she's now explained to me that no, she's got a lift and she's going in with a friend and um, she's going to meet my brother there. Okay, well if my brother's going to be there and and, the f and your friend's going to be there and, and, and auntie's going to drop you off, can't I come and take you? I won't drop you off, I'll wait. If you don't want me to go in, I'll wait in the car park, I'll do anything. I'll, I'll you know, why would she just drop you off? Why isn't she parking up and staying? Um, I'll do that. And she said, nope, nope, don't need you. So um, I said, okay, okay, can I ask why Jamie, my brother, didn't ring me um, to tell me? I told him not to. Now I need to take you back at that point to when my father at the beginning of the year had been attacked by this JW in his home and the day that we went down there his jaw was like this, his face was unrecognisable, it was very swollen and awful, black and blue. Mm. And you couldn't see, you couldn't see because his eyes were so puffy where they'd been pummeled. Very disturbing actually to see him like that. Um, anyway, the, the chap's cousin, the, well, the one who did this, the chap's co cousin, um, was supposedly a good friend of my dad's. It was also a Jehovah's Witness. It was also a Jehovah's Witness. <clears throat> had been there and seen him the night before, because my father had rung this chap on the way out of the hospital, because he discharged himself at three o'clock in the morning, and this other chap's quite a late bird, so he, he rang him and said, this is what's happened, <clears throat> your cousin's done this, so can you come round and need a bit of company? So he, came, he went round there. I uh, took one look at my father and said, you, you need to ring your, your son, Jamie. And he said, no, don't, don't get involved. No, I, don't want, to, I don't, want, don't want him to know. I don't want him to be involved. So he said, um, don't ring him. So anyway, the first thing I'm thinking when I'm looking at my father is, um, I need to ring him. I need to ring my brother. And I'm saying to my dad, Jamie needs to know. He said, don't tell him, don't tell him. No, please, don't tell him. Don't get involved, please. So anyway, I leave my father with, with Mark, go down. To my home and I pick up the phone first thing I do is ring my brother Jamie this is what's happened to dad and he said I know and I said what do you mean you know and he, and he said oh um this chap who's this cousin and this friend that had seen my father night before he's all he'd already rung him so I said well where are you then because I straight away I'm thinking where is he he shouldn't he be here to help his father to see how he can help and he said, um, I was going to come and see him later on. And I said, OK, well, um, we're with him. I've stopped work. We've cancelled work for today. And I've moved the work to whenever. Customers are very understanding. And that's fine. That's the one thing about being self-employed like this. You, it's good. When things like this happen, you can just drop stuff and help where the need is, which is with family. Mm. Drop everything, don't you? You you'd need, think, wouldn't you're you? there by their side. You'd think, wouldn't you? You'd think. Um, my brother's self-employed as well, so I just wanted to get that in. Anyway, um, we are now in a position where I'm thinking, right, I need to ring my mum. Even though they're separated, I need to ring her because she is obviously the mother of us two and that's the father of us two and it's, you know, they were once married and loved each other, so she needs to know. I ring her, no answer, so I leave a message. I text to let her know and I don't get anything back. Anyway, I've managed to get hold of Jamie and I said, I'm, I'm, I've rung left to where she's with mum and he, she straight, he straight away said, oh, she's already been in contact. I said, what, what do you mean? Because I thought, well, she's not rung me back and I'm the one who's, yeah, she got your message and she's rung me. So she doesn't want to speak to me about it then. Okay, that's fair enough. I said, um, so she knows now and he said, I didn't have much to tell her because obviously I only know what, from what um, this chap's told me uh, the night before. So I said, right, okay. Um, I said, well, I'm going to be down here all day. I, uh, can I suggest, I think he needs to go back to the hospital. I think you need to help me convince him he does. So I think he needs an operation. So that's that's that story. Um, but I had a conversation with my brother about this. And I said, can I ask you, please, as adults, as your sister, if one of our members of our family ever says, don't tell your brother, don't tell your sister, don't tell so-and-so, and if it's important, like this, to do with illness, to do with sickness, to do with... Life and death. Life and death. Can you please ignore <clears> it <throat> and actually contact Do the me? decent thing. Yes, totally agree. That was a very childish thing to do. There have always been like this. We need to start setting the standard of being adults. And I said, I totally agree. That's what we need to do. So, 
I had that pact with him. I had a very long conversation, best conversation I think I'd ever had. In fact, I mentioned it to Mark. I said, I've never had such an adult conversation with my brother in my life. It was wonderful. I said, at least something's come out of this tired tragedy that's happened mm. to Dad. I've actually managed to gain my brother, as you think. So back to now this thing where Jamie is now been told by my mother that she's got lung cancer. Where's my phone call? Where's this agreement we've had that even if somebody says don't tell so and so that, that we still get told i have had a phone call he hasn't bothered telling me the rest of the congregation already know but he is not mm. telling me that shows how little he thinks of me anyway well darling it's it's not just him it's the whole setup well my grandmother my, knew my aunties knew my uncles yeah. my cousins everybody knows if, if we needed any any sort of further examples of exactly where we stand uh we are we are dead we are we are literally dead in their, um, eyes. In their eyes well then i know it um going back to this now i said to right okay now now comes the point of you're going tomorrow can i can if i can't come can I ask that if you, once you've had this meeting at the hospital, which is in the morning, please ring me, or now give Jamie permission to ring me so that I can then be um, aware of what's going on and help where I can. So Tuesday, Mark goes to work, I stay here, I have one phone in one hand, one phone in the other, I'm sat on the sofa and I'm waiting for a call. I wait till quarter past three in the afternoon with two two loo breaks, that was it. I didn't eat, didn't drink, just wanted to wait, I didn't want to miss the phone call. Sat there, got the phone call, and the first thing she says to me is, um, they've said that it's, um, so it's mum that's rung me, not my brother. I still haven't spoken to my brother about it. He no. hasn't rung me, contacted me, no. done everything. I've spoken, I've tried to get hold of him, but he hasn't replied. He hasn't so bothered. He's, he's really gone down I'm, I'm obviously dead. Dead, 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 dead. So dead. I, I said to her, thank you for ringing me. I really appreciate you ringing me. Right, what have they said? Um, it's in my liver as well. Okay. <sighs> wasn't expecting that either. Okay. Um, where do we go from here? This is really important now. Uh, what are they going to do? And she said, um, they're going to do radio camp, radiotherapy. Now, they're only mine. This is no Tuesday. Going to do radiotherapy Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then they're going to see from there back another set of chemo. So I said, okay, um, can I go on any of those appointments? Can I, can I take you to all, all of them? Can I come with you? Um, Mark just said, do whatever you need to do. I'm available. No, nope, got them all sorted. Thank you. I don't need you. I don't. It's not about needing me. I want to be with you. You're my man. And. This isn't about fam this isn't about anything that's going on with religion. This is about family. I said, You've got one daughter, I've got one mother. I said, I really need to be with you. Please let me be with you. No, nope. doesn't want to go. So fair enough. So I got to the point where now, what do I do? So uh, for the next few days I'm in a bit of a whirlwind of emotion and whirlwind of well, she doesn't want to know me anymore. Uh, my mother, that's not my mother. My mother is not my mother. Uh, she doesn't want to know me. So, um, I've had to then just think, um, nobody, nobody wants to, um, have been in the position where their mother, um, has just basically told them that sh she's basically dying. I mean, we're all dying, but she's got uh, an illness now that potentially will kill her. Um, in the next few months, weeks, years, I don't know how much how much time she's got. I don't know because she hasn't told me. She hasn't allowed me to be privy to the information that everybody else in the whole wide world apart from her own one daughter is privy to. So I've now got to think what do I do about Charlotte, our daughter, because she's going to want to know why I'm so upset, how, where, where, um, I get any, um, so upset. Well, like, where I'm going from this, and then so I'm. What do I do? Do I tell her? I don't want to suddenly go down one day and say, "Well, by the way, your man's dead." Do I prepare her for it? So I, I think how long and hard for about two days before I even say anything. And she's desperate to know why I'm upset. Desperate. And I said, oh, "I'll tell you, darling. I will. I will. Just give me a bit of time." So yeah, this, this mummy's so upset right now. I said, "I need to just gather my thoughts, and I'll, I'll tell you." So I do. I sit her down. And I don't tell Mark I'm even planning on doing it. I tell both the children that are in the house. 
and I sit them down and I said, um, Nana's, Nana's not very well at all. I said, she's actually got cancer in the liver and cancer in the lung. I said, do you understand what this is? And we went through a little bit about the macro and the micro of it all. And um, they took it really well. We, we wept. We had some funny stories about things that happened and then we wept again. And then um, we kind of got on to the point where, well, we've, we've done what we can and she won't allow us to do anything else. So we're in a position now where, um, because of the stand we've taken with regards to this religion, um, and my family being really cruel, we watched a non-do too, love you, oh. <laughs> um, his judicial committee hearing the other day. Love you, my we've brother. We've been trying to catch up with it because there's so many. It's really good. It's a bit like us. We keep doing lots you, and lots of You've had us in yeah, stitches. stitches. We've, we've, we've been, we've been feeling angry. For you and our oh, emotions have been going like this with you. Because we had so many similar things to us. Oh, we're furious. We absolutely we found you hilarious. You, but, you're wonderful. But one of his, one of the parts of the judicial, there was a, uh, one of the brothers on his committee was saying that when I was out of the religion, um, what brought me back in was the um, non-association of my family and my friends. Mm. And I sat there and I thought, do you know what? If this cruelty, wicked, nasty, evil attitude and, and way that we're being treated at the moment with, I'm not going to tell you, your mother's ill, but we're not going to keep you informed and you can't be with her and you can't do anything to help her because you're out of the religion, is going to somehow drag us back. It does completely the and opposite. utterly the opposite. Mm. I really do not want to know if an evil, evil way that they can do this to members of their family. I'm sorry, but that's not that's not Christian. That's not Christian no. at all. No. So if you we, think yeah. that by by ignoring people and trying giving them the cold shoulder and treating them like they're dead is by any means going to bring people back into this organisation. You are so wrong. So wrong. You're so wrong, it's unbelievable. You're so wrong on a lot of different things, but on this particular part, how dare you? How dare this organisation do that? And, and I feel, for everyone trapped in this cult, I feel for you all. I really do. Please, just take a look at what they're doing. If you can't see simple things i tell you they've got it wrong they've got it wrong on so many different things do you want to see one of my birthday prezzies going off the subject can i see it did you get it from the postman no the lovely man next to me gave it oh. to me look now that that'll horrify oh, a few people somebody oh. that's another thing that the jw's do not want you to do is to wear anything like that now that to me it's something that's very beautiful and very precious and I will always cherish that. Now it's also an outward sign to people that I am definitely not going back ever into this religion. They will have you believe that Jesus died on a stake, a tree, like that. And um, what's the word? St Staros. Staros. Mm. Do you know what Staros means? It means crossbeam. Mm. Crossbeam. Not tree, crossbeam. There you go. So that to me is a very. A lot of you up be out there, would be going. Oh, right is now. Is it burning your but skin? You know what? No, actually, <laughs> it's not. Uh. So I, I'm literally telling people now. This is where I stand. Again, there's things that we will learn as we go along. Mm. My family really don't want anything to do with me, but you know what? I have a big family. I have an extended family. Thank you, um, Danmira. Um, yeah, you're thank a you wonderful so much. woman. And to all those other ones out there, um, yeah. Vera 747, um, yeah. Hill Diggity. Hill Diggity. <laughs> non you. Um, non, um, yeah, non dude. Non dude. Non dude. Yeah, yeah, uh, you've got a. Uh, thank There's you. There's so many of you. We? So many of you. You've been um, fantastic. Wonderful. Squirrely. Squirrely. Yeah. yeah. Um, lovely. Thank you very much. Um, and I will be talking to you again, probably a bit more in detail about different things. But that's just to bring you up to where we are. Loving, aren't they? But, you know, on this birthday of mine, my first birthday, which is very strange to be celebrating it, but it's 
beautiful. There's nothing wrong. I haven't burned. Nothing. No bar, lot of bolt balloons come down and crushed me to the floor. How many balloons did you have when you came? One hundred balloons from There's my children. hundred balloons. And my children up. love me, and I love my children. Yeah. So I'm going to leave it here. But I thank one you. One more thing. Listening. The rot stops here. Yeah. Mark's going to do another one on blood again soon. Take care. I'll speak to Bye. you soon. Bye.